The time has come. You are now ready to make a listing. This is actually part eight of my How to Start an Etsy Shop in 2023 series. So if you have not seen the previous seven episodes, I would suggest to start with episode one. If you are brand new to Etsy and haven't even like made an account yet or even know what you want to sell, they're also useful if you have already started a shop and want to improve it. And those are all in a playlist. I will link that in the description. Just like in the last video where I took you through step-by-step -step with actually opening a shop, today we're going to start step-by-step -step, top to bottom on the listing page. And because I am not trying to do more work than I have to because I also run a shop full-time, I have dedicated videos on some of these things that I will mention throughout this. If you want to reference those, I will link all of them in the description as well. Since there are a lot of different sections of the listing page, I'm going to split them up a little bit. I was going to do them all in a separate video, but I think that's going to be too much. So I'm going to do like a few at a time and see where we get. So before you even start making your listing, before you even click on the add a new listing button, before you even make a product, you have to do keyword research. Again, we talked about this briefly in one of the previous videos, but you have to know whether or not there is a market for your product on Etsy. Just because it is a handmade item does not mean that people are jumping to buy that kind of thing on Etsy already. You'll need to do your keyword research beforehand so you know what keywords to use when you make your listing. And if there's not really a market for the product that you're thinking about making, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of stress in the long run. You can absolutely do keyword research on your own just browsing through Etsy. Make sure you use an incognito browser though. That way you don't mess up your own search history and start getting biased results. There are a lot of those third-party websites that help you do keyword research and I don't want to say don't use those but I just can't recommend any of them. I've only used one so I'm not comfortable saying it's better or worse than any other one. But what is really the most important now with Etsy's algorithm kind of continuing to evolve as it gets older and becomes more like uh, social media with its algorithm, it's more important that there is a market for your niche, not necessarily for your specific product or even like your specific keyword. Because why I said a minute ago to use an incognito browser so you don't get biased results, it's going to start tailoring shoppers' home feeds and like the recommendations, the emails they get and everything based on what they have viewed before, what they've favorited, shops they've favorited, and shops they've bought from. And most of your traffic is going to come from that versus search. So keywords are not as important as they used to be. But they are still important because the algorithm is a computer. It's not a person that needs to know what the item is and what, like where it fits, what niche it's in, what which of its users are going to like that item. I do have a video all about how Etsy search ranking works and I explain about keywords and things in that video. So moving on, we are going to start off with photos. It's the first thing you see when you open up the add a listing page and the photos are arguably the most important. Actually, I don't know if that's arguable. They probably are the most important. I do have an entire previous video about how to make the listing video and I'll link that in the description box as well, like anything else I mention. And I do show how I take product shots and set up everything in that video. So for more detailed examples, you can check that out, but I'm going to just talk about some general stuff right here. So as we can see, it says, add as many photos as you can so buyers can see every detail. This does not mean one photo. And see this text next to the photos. Use up to 10 photos to show your item's most important qualities. Tips. Use natural light and no flash. Include a common object for scale. Show the item being held, worn, or used. Shoot against a clean, simple background. Add photos to your variation so buyers can see all their options. Why do you think that's there? There really is no excuse to have less than maybe five photos. You really should have all 10. I'm going to be completely honest, I don't have all 10 in all of my listings. <laughs> But when I look at shops and do shop reviews and things, I see too many people have just one photo. So make sure you have a bare minimum five. That is my rule, not Etsy's rule, but I'm saying bare minimum five photos of your actual product. You do not need a DSLR. You do not need professional equipment. You really just need your smartphone. And if that smartphone was made in the last 
five or six years, it should take perfect photos unless you have broken it somehow. If they're always coming out dark or the color's not quite right, there are settings you can change if you accidentally change them. If you're not tech savvy, you might have accidentally turned it on manual. You need to put it back on auto. Look up stuff about your specific phone and the camera. I promise you don't need to like get really fancy lighting or really you shouldn't even have to edit your photos if your camera is set properly. And especially if you can take the photos in natural light. But if you're trying to take photos with just the light from your bedroom and you've got one of those boob lights that is absolutely terrible, making shadows everywhere, it's probably not going to look good and you probably don't want to use just that lighting. The biggest mistake I see with photos, aside from the lighting being not great, is the cropping. This is one thing I wish they would tell you up front before you upload a photo to this add a listing. Let me show you this, okay? Okay, so all I did here was click on the jewelry and accessories, so I'm going to show you what I mean. So you see these photos, they are not square. See, these are more rectangular, okay? So let me... it shouldn't take me long to find an example of um, this being wrong. Although jewelry is small, so... What the heck? People are doing a good job, I guess, because I, when I need an example of this, I can't find it. Okay, this one right here is questionable. The cropping, okay, that's what we're focusing on here. So they took this a bit too close up and it cuts off most of the product. I really would not know, like, actually, I don't know what this is. I'm obviously not the target market for this because I feel like if you knew what this was, you would know what the thing is, but I don't. I don't know if I need this product or not because I can't really see it and I'm not really going to click on it. Okay, I found one, finally. So this looks like they are selling the skirt, but I can't see the skirt. It's cut off. It looks more like they are selling the, um, I don't know what this garment would be called, tunic type thing, the blue, the blue part. <laughs> they're selling the, the white part, but it looks like they're selling the blue part. So perhaps a different top would have been better for this photo. Another one is this corset. I think I have actually um, browsed this shop before, but you just want to have the whole thing in the photo because I can't really see the neckline or what the bottom looks like without clicking on it. See? Okay, this is the same shop that had the white skirt with the blue top. This is a better picture of the actual skirt because you can see it. And this photo also, I don't really know what it is they're looking at. It looks like, it looked kind of like the back of a chair for a second, to be honest. <laughs> so like something like this would be okay as a separate photo if you're zoomed out, but not for the main photo if you're not including the um, compass. This one, not necessarily the cropping, but since I'm like sitting here scrolling trying to find examples because I don't want to like pick out any specific shop. I'm just like scrolling through the pages that are coming up. They they are selling a Wednesday dress and all I see is the collar. So probably not the best background, although the aesthetic fits the Wednesday, but you can't see the dress. And with this one and also the one next to it that's kind of cut off in my recording, but um, you can't read that. So your cropping's off. See how easy that was? So I use this size, the 2700 and 2025, for the dimensions when I crop my photos. It's Especially the first one, which is going to be the one that shows up in search results and in people's recommended. This is actually going to start when you take your photos. If you take them from too close up, you're not going to be able to add extra space. You can't like uncrop a photo that you've already taken. So you need to start farther away than you think you need. I know we're used to taking vertical photos with our smartphones, but that's not going to fly because you, it's not going to line up correctly. I have tried it. I tried to take it from farther away vertically, but it doesn't work. So on your smartphone, you can actually change 
the aspect ratio of the photo or video that you're taking before you even take it. So you might not even have to crop at all if you just change it to four by three. And after you upload your photos, you can, you, you physically can crop them within this Etsy page. I have been on Etsy since 2017 and this has never worked right. So I would safely say don't use it. Don't rely on it at least. But after you put that initial photo that's horizontal or if you if you don't want to make a horizontal photo, if you want to do a square, just make sure everything important is within the 4x3 ratio. Okay. I also could have just done this. I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but when I was setting up the shop, you have to add a listing. And in the last video, I just added this dress that I made that I have no intention of selling, but just something to put there that I made, but as kind of a placeholder. As you can see, this is the photo that I uploaded. This is in a vertical format. I actually think I cropped it before I uploaded it. So it's, this is like three to three by four the wrong way. You want four by three is the right way, four wide and three tall. But this is exactly how this is going to show in the search results and on the recommended feed and everything like that. So you can click on this adjust thumbnail, but you cannot make it any smaller. You can't zoom out farther than the picture is. And there is no possible way that I could get the entire dress in this photo. I would also not use this photo at all if I was actually selling this dress because the background with my closet and the door just not professional. You want an actual backdrop. And it gets more difficult as your items get larger because this is an actual, like, this is not a doll. This is a, a human sized dress. So like jewelry and stuff, pretty easy, but it, as you get bigger and the items are long or wide, it gets a little bit more tricky to fit them in the photo. You just got to play around with it. So if I was adding more photos of this dress, I would take a picture of the back. I would do a close up of the zipper. I would do a picture of the inside. I would do a close up of the actual fabric and I would show it on a model, whether that's you or someone else that is trying it on and maybe do like an action shot, like a dress like this. This is a full circle skirt. So it's going to be, um, what do you call that? Swooshy. <laughs> Like you can spin and it'll go up, you know, so like I would maybe have like an action shot of it moving so you can see how full the dress is or holding it up. Stuff like that where you can show off the item being used or worn because you may have spent hours and hours and days and weeks looking at this thing. You know what it looks like, but your customers don't. Once you have the photos, like I said, at least five of the actual product itself, then you can add informational photos as well. If it is something like clothing or something that comes in different sizes, a size chart is an absolute must. You could also do one with just bullet point, quick information about the product that the customer would need to know. So you can highlight its most important features like what it's made of, or if it's something functional, include its functions like if you sell cups and they're dishwasher safe, people want to know that. So put that on the photo. Just keep that informational photo very brief and communicate what you're trying to communicate in as few words as possible. Why say many word when a few word do trick? That kind of photo really helped my shop to take off because people don't really read descriptions. Sometimes they do, but you want to catch people's attention right away. They want to know the information that they want to know or else they're going to click the back button and find somebody else's listing. So if you have it right there in the photos, right in their face, they will see it. And if they have information that they need, then they will be more likely to purchase. So one photo could be information about the product. Second photo or second informational photo could be information about your shop. So you can include your logo. You can put like a photo of you or your workshop or whatever and have text that explains in the same fashion as the last photo, very briefly about your shop. So if I was selling this dress, I would put more dresses available in my shop. Dressmaker since 2005 or 
something, you know. Anything special about your shop that you would want to advertise, like if you only use recycled packaging, or if you have an email list, or social media accounts, you can have information in that photo as well. So that photo is going to be basically like a business card. You can do more than that, but I think more than that gets a little bit spammy and people may not read them, so I think two is plenty. Another one that's optional that you could do if you offer custom items, you could just detail how you can customize them or how they can request a custom item. Okay, that was a very long explanation about photos, so let's go on to the video. But like I said, I have an entire dedicated video about how to make listing videos that don't suck, so I will link to that below. Videos are very important, and you can also reuse the footage for social media, so don't sleep on videos. Okay, now we're getting into the listing details. The first one is the title. If you watch other videos like mine or read blogs and things about Etsy, you're probably going to see a hot debate pop up every now and then about whether titles should be long or short. From what I've seen, it doesn't matter <laughs> that much. Like, it's not going to make or break your listing if you have a really long or really short title. I still have this page up and if I hover over like some of these like this I would consider this a short title this is a short title and some of these are very long like this one is crammed full of keywords the most important thing in your title is going to be your focus keyword and any descriptive words like what color or size or something if it's relevant to that product like I mentioned earlier with the keyword you want to have this on hand before you even start, but your focus keyword is going to be the most relevant few words that describe your product. So if I am doing this dress, my focus keyword for this would probably be black satin dress, but that is not descriptive enough to explain what it is, so I need to add a few more things. I would probably call this black satin faux wrap dress. Actually, no black satin faux wrap long sleeve dress or long sleeve lined dress. Let me type that out because I can't think, I, I can't think that in my head. I have to type it. <laughs> it's being super specific by adding the faux wrap, but that kind of explains the style. And that was based off of a 70s vintage pattern, so I could have put 70s inspired in here somewhere. I might even leave out lined, and you could put that in the description. And then I would consider this title that I have here to be relatively short. I still have 95 more characters that I could add to it. But don't feel like you have to fill this up because it gets confusing to customers when they're trying to read the title and you add stuff in there that may not be relevant. Like on Amazon, where they have very, very, very long titles on Amazon with a bunch of keywords that may or may not even be related to the actual item. But with this title, the customer, if they wanted to search for this, they would not have to put all of this. They could put black satin and dress. They could also put black long sleeve dress, and it would still pick it up. So don't worry too much about the word order because the search knows that people put things in different orders sometimes. It's fine. But if I was going to make this long, I would put, like, it's made of polyester charmeuse. That's just a kind of fabric. If you don't know, it's not important. <laughs> then I would do, like, uh, 70s. Inspired. Dress. Vintage style. Something like that if you wanted to just really fill those up and see. I have personally been kind of going back and forth with my own listings and keeping track of this because I started off doing the really long titles and I've been like shortening ones that don't do so well and I don't see any difference at all whether the title is short or long. I do see a difference in my photos though. For example, I should have mentioned this in the photos probably, but I have scrunchies in my shop and some of the photos I took on my wrist in front of a brick background, very nice looking in natural light. And then some of them I had to take in not natural light on a white background. And the difference between the sales and views 
on the modeled brick background and the plain white background, very, very large gap there. So if I were actually selling this dress, I would be wearing it in the photo, I mean. The next one is going to be just about the listing, and this is pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to answer this on your own. And there are things that are banned on Etsy, and I'm pretty sure I saw a few of them pop up when I was looking for examples a second ago. But if you want to know, you can click on this link to read about those. There are certain things like certain kinds of taxidermy, and like you can't put, um, like I don't think you can sell CBD kind of stuff. Maybe you can. I don't know. There are restrictions though, so make sure you check those if you're selling anything that's remotely questionable. But who made it? Did you make it? Did somebody else make it or another company entirely? So you want to put another company if you do print on demand. But most people should be, I made it. And then what is it? Is it a finished product or a supply or tool to make things? And then when did you make it? So if you have already made it up to this point, you can click on the 2020 to 2023. Or if you are making it to order, you can put made to order. So for handmade, actually, so I'm trying to like click on these because I've never picked the other options. So if you click I did or a member of my shop made it, then that is going to be for handmade products. So like a member of my shop would be you and your sibling make things or you and your mom or whoever and it wasn't you specifically, then you would pick a member of my shop. But if you are selling vintage items or craft supplies or I believe this would apply to print on demand, you would click on another company or person. And then if it's vintage or something, you could pick, you know, the decade, um, era, etc. Okay, and then the category. So it sometimes will auto-populate the correct one based on your title. Or you can start typing it in to get suggestions. Let's see what happens when I do this. So if you don't know exactly how to describe it, which you probably should, it will help guide you through the categories. So these are the main categories that are going to be on Etsy and then other things kind of branch off from these. So if your product does not fit within any of these categories, I would consider something else, just to be honest. Although they do sometimes add new categories based on feedback, so you could send your feedback to Etsy if you know for sure your specific product that you sell is not going to be part of one of these categories, you could ask them to add it, especially if it's something that's like super, super niche. So everything that pops up underneath of this is considered an attribute, and those are going to change based on the category that you pick. So that's why it may be difficult to have an item that does not fit within any of those categories. Even if you pick one that's kind of similar-ish, you may not get the appropriate attributes and that may slow you down a little bit. I won't say it'll be impossible, but it's going to slow things down. So I've actually never listed clothing before, honestly. Um, so it will have me pick a color. So you can pick a color. Just pick the closest one because there's not a ton of options. If you have two different colors, then pick... Like if the dress was black and white, I would put black and then white. So for this dress, the size is going to have different scales. So women's numeric and women's letter. So like numeric would be 2468, letter would be small, medium, large. Or if you're outside of the U.S., you would use the appropriate sizing system. And you, oh, I did not know. That is awesome. <laughs> you could pick if it has pockets or not. Oh, wow. Oh, this is very specific. Basically, these attributes are to help people narrow their search. So for this sizing, I honestly don't know what size the dress is because the pattern I made was a size 12, but I am not a size 12. It's a little bit off. I'm just going to guess that that's about a 4. It doesn't really matter for my purposes anyways, but it does matter if you are listing um, an actual thing for sale. Um, I forgot to add pockets, so I'm going to click no. And this is super awesome, especially for my shop because it does apply to my shop. But on certain things, this sustainability attribute pops up and you can pick if any of these apply. 
don't pick anything like in any of the attributes don't pick anything if it does not apply to your listing just leave it blank because you're going to mislead people and if i were to click like that this is made of hemp and people were searching for hemp dresses and this is not hemp they're not going to buy it because it's not what they were searching for so that's going to work against me so don't do that um pattern It is solid, but there are a few to pick from. Sleeve length, it does have long sleeves. I don't know what bracelet sleeve is, but long. The neckline, I would call that, let's see examples. Oh, no, 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 not splint. I guess I would call it V-neck. Hem length is mid-calf, I think. I think I would call that full style um wrap clothing style uh it's closest to lolita <laughs> i'm not really sure so this occasion i think occasion and holiday pop up on all of them but this one looks like it only popped up with occasions that would um take a dress so i don't know if i would pick any of these maybe bachelorette party but that one's a stretch so if you're not sure don't put anything and make sure to read this too. It says items for the occasion. For example, it would be graduation party decor, not items that would be gifted for that occasion. And the same thing with holiday, that's items specifically for a holiday is not items that could be gifted for them. So that doesn't apply, so I'm not gonna pick anything. But let's pretend this is something else, okay? So let's pretend that it's a keychain and I'm gonna say it's black the length so this sometimes pops up with the materials or with the um it's the length i'm going to say it's like uh three inches maybe however big keychain is and then the same thing with the occasion and holiday some of them have more attributes than others it just depends just go through it and fill it out to the best of your ability so if you have a wreath you can select the embellishments there's a whole list here the colors and then the dimensions. You can pick a shape if these apply. If there are flowers on it, you can pick those. You can pick uh, if it's not a flower, if it's just a plant. What kind of wreath it is, if it's artificial or dried or fresh. Um, the style, if that applies. And then of course, again, the occasion holiday or uh, this one has season so that's interesting so if you want to you can just go in and play around with this and see what all is available here they do add new ones like the sustainability option is like within the last few months i think and if you need new ideas for new products to add and you make wreaths for example here's what etsy considers the most popular kinds so you could use these as ideas. And of course that's just using wreaths here as an example, but that could apply to any category that you pick and the attributes that pop up for it. Don't be limited by that, but that's just some ideas. And the next option is the renewal options. So I would not pick manual for anything really, I would put automatic. For the renewal options, those are gonna last for four months, like it says, or until the listing sells out. So basically you pay the 20 cents up front to list the item and then if you have it on auto renew after four months if it does not sell then you will be charged the 20 cents again when it renews if the product does sell before four months then you will be charged 20 cents again if you have more in stock than you sold so if you have two in stock you sold one you'll be charged the 20 cents again to renew the listing for the remaining product in stock. Or let's say you have five of something in stock and you sell three. So you paid the 20 cents up front to list the first one. Then if you sell three, they're going to charge you 60 cents because again, you already paid for the first one, 20 cents for the second one, another 20 cents for the third one. And then you still have to be able to sell the fourth one. So it's going to charge you 20 cents 
to renew that again to be able to sell the fourth and fifth ones. So if you list five of an item, like a quantity of five on any listing, it's not gonna charge you a dollar because 20 cents times five is a dollar. It's just gonna be 20 cents up front, no matter how many quantity, if you have one or 999, it'll just charge you the additional if you sell more than one. I would not choose the manual option. You just have to keep an eye on when your listings are going to expire because after your initial push of product into your shop, there all of your listings are all gonna have different renewal dates. So you have to kind of pay attention to which ones are going to expire. You just don't want a listing to expire because then you may not realize it and that's gonna be a lost chance to actually sell it because renewed listings get a little bit of a boost in the search when they get renewed. I explain more about that in my how the Etsy search ranking works video. Just trust me, you wanna pick automatic for this. And then here's where you pick whether it is a physical item or a digital item. And if you are print on demand, that's still going to be physical even though you are not the one shipping it. And then we have the description. I have an entire video that I think is pretty good about how to write a description. Your description and most other things in the listing are going to help you convert your views into sales. And there is a pretty tried and true format for writing a description that I think almost all of the top sellers use. So check out that video, how to write descriptions that convert. I will link that in the description as well. The description of this video. I will link to a video about how to write descriptions for your Etsy listings. <laughs> and this is where you would add a production partner. So you want to click on this and see if a production partner is required for you. Let's see what it says. Your production partner is a company or individual who is not part of your Etsy shop that helps physically produce items based on your own original designs. Examples of production services include Brent but are not limited to fine art and apparel printing, 3D printing, cutting, sewing, casting, plating, and engraving. Production partners do not include your own shop members or suppliers from whom you source ready-made products to resell. So there's information here if you think this applies to you. Most people don't unless you do print on demand, honestly. So you can read through this and I linked to it from this right here. Is this required for you? And then the next one is sections. So this is going to help you organize your shop and make it a lot easier for buyers to shop your listings. This is not so important if you only have a few listings because it, you might only have one or two products in each category or each section, but it is more important when you have a lot of listings. So just be mindful of that as you keep adding more. You wanna make sure that you are making it easier for your customers to shop. Like what if you went into Target and all the products were just everywhere. They didn't have aisles with specific things, like there was no laundry aisle or no baking aisle or no clothing section. It was just all random. You don't want that, so make sure you organize things into sections. So I don't know how many shops that I have tried to buy from personally, uh, specifically like fabric shops on Etsy and also vintage shops that don't use sections and it drives me nuts. I'm not gonna scroll through with 3000 listings because you didn't want to put them in sections. So just keep that in mind. The next part is your tags. Um, I would say these are not optional. Sorry, Etsy. So you're gonna put your keywords in here that somebody might use to search for your product or keywords about your niche that would help the recommendation system show your products to people who may be interested. So for my dress, I would put like vintage inspired dress or black satin dress, knee length dress, stuff like that. And then this has some ideas right here. So you could put who is it for? What's the main color? What method or technique did you use to make it? What size is it? What style is it? What's the main material? Does the item feature imagery or motifs? There is a character limit. You can only put 20 characters in each tag. And if you need to use one that's really long, like longer than 20, you can break it up. So if it is solid black, satin dress probably won't fit. So you could put solid black and then satin dress in a separate one and it'll still recognize that. And one tag you do not want to forget is your shop name. So this actually does make a huge difference if you start growing a social media following or you tell people in real life about your shop, you know, if you get word of mouth um, advertising and people are going to go to Etsy and even if they remember your shop name, which is a difficult thing 
to accomplish in and of itself. But if they know your shop name and they type it in, sometimes it doesn't come up, even if they type it in exactly word for word as it is spelled into the search, it may not come up. So you're going to create your shop name as a search by putting it as a tag. You should not have any competition for your shop name as a search result if you're the only one using it in your tags. So even if your shop page doesn't come up, they should at least see some of your listings pop up and then if they've used Etsy before, they're gonna know that they can get to your shop that way. So make sure you use all 13 tags or 12 plus your shop name. Make sure they are relevant to your actual product so somebody types those into search or if somebody was looking for items like that tag that they would want to come across your item. If you're unsure whether or not your tag or your keyword is good fit for your item is to just go to Etsy, again, incognito browser, and search for that term and see what comes up. If the things are similar to your product, and hopefully your product is better than the ones that are already there, then you're good. But if it comes up with something totally unrelated, you have no idea what it even is, maybe try rephrasing. So let me put my money where my mouth is and go back up here to our search. Let me try to search for that dress, see what, see what happens here. Black satin dress. Oh, oh, I did not know this. Hang on. Is this new? So it has the recommended ones up here, the quote unquote most loved. I assume these have high, well, this shop only has seven reviews. So how is, I don't know, anyways. <laughs> but there's a section here of items from star sellers. So everybody that said it was pointless, there you go. And look, the shop has 33 reviews and they're on the front page when I search for black satin dress. There are 17,564 black satin dresses on Etsy. That's actually not a terrible amount of competition because some listings have um, like millions <laughs> or some search terms have millions of listings. So see this is why video is important because this is going to stand out more than these other ones because when I didn't even click on this I just rolled my mouse over it and it started playing the video. Not a fan of that video TBH. It's a little bit too gimmicky like uh, yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't approve that one. But all these are sleeveless. Okay who is editing these? <laughs> this one's fine it's showing the dress no problem. But this one's got the funky transitions, just mm, personal preference, I suppose. But what I'm looking for here, the only dress that is even remotely similar to the one that I had is this one, but it's not even black. So why did it come up when I search for black? Is black an option? Ah, it is. That's why. So kind of getting off track here, but I think this is still important and useful information. So by searching black satin dress, you would think there would be a lot of black satin dresses, but apparently not. And most of the ones that are coming up are sleeveless. Mine has sleeves. What I'm also looking at here is the number of sales and reviews of the shops that are here. So there are very, very few, like one, two, three, three, four maybe of these so far that have over a thousand reviews. So that is kind of telling me that there's not a huge market for these on Etsy. And most of these don't have a video so you could easily stand out by having a video. The photos for the most part are pretty good though. But these are not like custom bespoke items, um, which you can pretty clearly tell from the amount of less than five star reviewed shops. Like why is this one 70% off? So this shop um, has uh, bad reviews, they don't do free returns, and are kind of slow on the shipping. So that's a problem. And the a lot of comments said that it didn't fit. Um, well, this is more of like a multi-size thing, but 
other items they said didn't fit and I didn't see any size charts. So that's a big one. That's why I said earlier to make sure you have a size chart to avoid people having issues with sizing because what I call a small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, you may not, so it depends. This shop has a ton of reviews, 72,000 sales. One size fits most? That stretches from a 25 to a 38? No freaking way. Apparently it works. All right. And if your items are actually handmade, you will stand out in this search result as well. I mean, all clothing is handmade. I'm not trying to get on a soapbox here, but um, if you made a dress using fair labor practices, there is no way that you could charge less than $50, let alone less than like two or $300 for a good quality dress. And people that are looking for good quality products are going to know that. They're not going to expect a dress for $20. And that's why I suggest to not worry about your competitors' prices too much. So that's where I'm going to end it here. We are going to pick up in the next video, starting at the price, quantity, SKU, variations, personalization, shipping, and all of that. I might do s shipping separately, but we will see. But don't forget to go back and watch the previous videos in this series if you haven't already, and stick around for the ones that are coming up. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.